Hello and welcome back. And that is right, today we want to return to the subject of the Unify UNAS Pro. Now, for those of you that have followed the channel for a while, you know I've taken a particularly special interest in this system. Notwithstanding uh, a large networking brand that's pretty known in the industry rolling out their first network attached storage device is pretty important as far as I'm concerned. On top of that, I did say that I wanted to keep an eye on this product every few months to see how development goes. One, to commit the brand to this product just to see what they do, but also because a lot of users went out and purchased one of these and I want to know this isn't just a drop in the pan. So uh, in this video we're looking at six months since the launch of the device. A few disclaimers straight off the bat. Number one, I'm not going to cover everything I've covered in the initial review, the one month later, any of the other videos or even the three month later. This is a continuation of covering this device so I recommend checking out before watching this if you haven't already my three months later video because there are going to be points in that that I'm not going to address here. Some of those those points, by the way, the good and the bad, have either been addressed or have still been left by the wayside by Unify on this solution. So do keep in mind that although I'm going to cover some points in this video, I'm not going to cover absolutely everything because it will just mean I'm retreading stuff that a number of you have already seen in the last video. Also, I touched on this a little in the previous video, but I think if anything, after six months since launch, it's become more true. The majority of the updates that have taken place on uh, both the drive application and the NAS OS that the UNAS runs with, the majority of those updates and changes have applied to stability and foundational updates. There have been some feature updates, there have been some changes to the GUI, some for the best, some for the worst, but overall, the majority of the updates that have taken place have been about stability ability and those foundations. Now, I don't have a problem with that. I think that is probably for the best. The idea that this system rolled out, if there'd been a bunch of feature updates in six months, I think there would be a lot of users that would say, how about nailing down the fundamentals and then building on top of those? Again, you can't please everyone, but I will say that in the six months since this device has rolled out, the majority of updates have been focused on that stability and the foundations. And finally, I'll highlight there has not been any other NAS hardware introduced in the Unify portfolio, not just a Unify as non-pro or a 1U or 2U or 3U or 4 bay or whatever, there's not been any other NAS devices introduced in those six months there. Again, I'm not going to criticise that just because it's still very early days. I still would like to see the brand do more uh, with this system and do more different profiles as they've done with the UNVR system and all of their switches and I'm pretty confident they will. But still, nonetheless, this is the only device out there and because of that, a lot of the criticisms that this device received in terms of its 7 bay architecture lack of USB connectivity there, a 10G and a 1G port, a lot of these still stand on this system for many. It's not everyone's bag of chips, this device, but it's still trying to find a middle ground there between its price tag and just exactly what you can get for that money. And just so we're clear, because we had a bit of a discussion, didn't we, about the word football in the last video, just so we're on the same page, a bag of chips is something that a woman called Betty hands you at a chip shop that's covered in salt and vinegar, and there's a whiff of the air of nationalism about the establishment. It is not something that a guy called Zach hands me at a 7-Eleven that goes crunch in a bag. And don't even get me started on the whole Walkers and Lays business. Now, one of the biggest changes that's happened in the last few months on this software is something I alluded to right at the tail end of my previous video that is now available in both the release candidate and rolling out publicly almost certainly very, very soon. And that is RAID 6 support on this system. It was criticized a lot at launch that RAID functionality on this device felt rather limited. When you rolled it out, you set it up, initialization straight away, you only really had one disk failure protection or a kind of hybrid RAID 10 kind of situation where you sliced up all the drives into two piles. Uh, but a RAID 6 was heavily demanded. Two disks of failure protection there. Lose one drive, it still runs. Lose two drives, it still runs and you've still got all of your data there. Now, RAID 6 implementation, it's mostly the same as any other NAS brand I've seen, but an ever so slight difference for the better, I should add. Now, when you go for a RAID 5 environment, you've got one drive of failover. One of the things that the UNAS Pro integrated as well was a hot spare. A hot spare, for those who aren't aware, is when you have not only a drive that allows you to, in the event of a drive failure, still keep your data, but a hot spare is a drive that automatically is imbibed into the existing RAID array in order to facilitate immediate uh, RAID rebuild there. Now, that may, it's not the same as a RAID 6. Now, RAID 6, when it's integrated, therefore, to disk failover, much like RAID 5, in most other NAS brands I've dealt with, when you have a, a RAID 5 with a hot spare and then you want to upgrade to a RAID 6, you're not able to comfortably and quickly use 
the hot spare. You have to disengage the hot spare from a RAID 5 environment and then manually integrate that into a RAID 6 migration. Now, in the case of the UNAS Pro, they've done it a lot more slicker, I would argue. If you do have a hot spare in place and you try to move over to a RAID 6, the system does warn you that if you don't have extra drives, you are almost certainly going to have to reformat all of your data. But if you have the hot spare in place and you disable the hot spare option, the system knows. And therefore, when it goes into the RAID 6, it actually tells you it's going to imbibe the drive that was a hot spare environment drive and you won't have to reformat the whole RAID rate. It's a very small distinction. And this really only applies to those that have fully populated these seven bays. But still, nonetheless, it's a nice way that integration of RAID 6 has happened for those of you that may have gone for a RAID 5 with a hot spare when you launched the device and now you want to migrate over to RAID 6 quickly. Another small feature change that was complained about during the early launch of this device was those that wanted to integrate a cloud backup. Now, you could always get another UNAS Pro or another NAS device on SMB or Samba and then have the two backing up. But for those that wanted to use cloud platforms, there wasn't a huge number of options. Luckily, now they have integrated more cloud platforms in order for you to back up towards Dropbox, OneDrive, and of course, Google Drive that was there at the start. So it's nice to have those extra platforms. It's a small change, I will say, but at least it's there and it is something they've added that people requested. Now, another complaint that didn't really come up much at launch, it was certainly a complaint that happened over the growing months as more users started integrating the UNAS Pro into the environments, was the fact that if you were an admin and you wanted to manage the backups of some of your user backup drives, you couldn't do it. You would have to go into each of the individual accounts and then manage those individual backups manually, which is not only inconsistent, it's madness that an admin doesn't have superpower over those backups of those sub-user drives. That has been changed now. Admin users can now manage the backup operations of individual user drives. Obviously, if you are a non-admin, you can't manage another user's drives, so that distinction exists, but it's good that an admin now has what should have been a a day one software ability. This next one's less a big feature improvement and more of uh, improvements in responsiveness. Alongside a big list of those updates I mentioned earlier on, and they were talking about system responsiveness, uh, creating shared files and sharing files itself is way more responsive now. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, when you wanted to share files and folders, a lot of the time the GUI was actioning what you were putting into it, but you never really felt that it was actually doing it. It was being way too responsive. You'd refresh the page and it looked like the action that you'd taken didn't actually take. Now, this is isn't uncommon in early software development. But now I can comfortably say that when I uh, go onto the system creating files shares, not only is it a lot more responsive than it was, but it's 100% accurate in terms of what it is creating. And those shares and the uh, configurations that I created were a great deal more responsive. Next, a small tweak in the GUI that I wanted to highlight, and that is the activity monitor with files. Now, an activity monitor on any NAS device has always been there with pretty much any NAS brand you can name, but I quite like they've integrated now the file activity monitor, which means that when you go into the drive area and see lots of details with regard to files and folders, you can actually look at a certain folder, for example, and then immediately on the right-hand side, go into the activity, and it'll give you a timeline of what exactly has gone on with this area of storage on the system. It's a very small tweak, but I think it's quite nice to look at change logs, particularly given that you can go into, say, the snapshots list and then find out changes that have taken place. Some of you might not want to go into the snapshots timeline because you might action a snapshot or not get a full picture on a microcosm level you know, in such an invasive fashion. Whereas what you would like to do is just look at the file monitor and go, huh, these are the things that have happened on this file, this folder over the timeline. It's a small change, but I wanted to highlight it. I'm talking of file folder activity, if we zoom in a little bit onto SMB or Samba, um, I'm pleased to say that one, and this is weird this wasn't out the gate, that uh, those that want to use Time Machine backups or wanted to target their Apple Time Machine backups towards the NAS can now use those shared drives, something that was weird that it wasn't available out the gate, but now that is available. Also, if you are running the system via SMB, uh, and you know, on using your local file explorer, I'm pleased to see that it can recognize now .exe or executionables, whereas before, when 
you try to activate executionable files, either wouldn't action at all, or your local file browser would make it look like it action, but the NAS hadn't really caught up to the pace. I'm glad that has been fixed, but ultimately those are the main fixes and changes that have taken place. Nothing enormous, but again, quality of life improvements mixed with resilience and uh, objective back end improvements, but it's not all good news. Let's focus about some of the things that have still yet to see changes or you know, vast improvements at all. At this point, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but where's the iSCSI? I get it, I get it, I get it. iSCSI is not for everyone, but at the same time, even if with this system running on an ARM based processor, I'll say right now, the demand for iSCSI support on this has reached a point where I would say it's one of the loudest commanded you know, feature sets of this device that still haven't been rolled out. RAID 6 is great, but where is iSCSI support? Do a Google on Reddit, do a Google on the YouTube comments of anyone's video and look for the word iSCSI. Trust me, it's not just me. Another one, where is the scheduled on and off? Where is the scheduled activation or deactivation of individual ethernet ports on this system? I know there's only two, one RJ45, one and SFP, but whether it is the whole system having a scheduled on and off outside of active hours, or the individual ethernet ports, uh, network ports I should say, having their own up and down on your own schedule, these are logical air gap settings that the majority of NAS brands have either introduced this year or have been introduced already for years. And I think it's weird that this system doesn't have scheduled on and off when pretty much it's an industry option across every other brand. Also, this is a side bug, and I know it's something that almost certainly will be resolved, but I'm not the only one that's clocked this. Lots of users, myself included, their device is showing 20,000 days in use. That's like 28,000 weeks. That's like 55 years of uptime. Look at the title of this video, six months on. I think that might be a bug. Another option that's weirdly absent on this device that I would argue is available on the majority of other NAS brands is fan control. I understand that the system, uh, for the sake of a power efficiency and just system 24 seven will have automated fan up, fan down requirements, but I will say the temperatures this system is giving me are kind of whack. What do I mean by that? Well, the drives, whether I was in or out of the RAID building, uh, the RAID six that I'll come back to either in this video or another one, I will say the drive temperatures were fairly standard, but the system temperatures were kind of all over the place. I saw them at 68 to 72 degrees, both in and outside of that RAID 6 rebuilding that was taking place there. Those are unusually high, and it's particularly unusually high when you have those numbers on screen next to a CPU resource monitor that's sitting there at 10 to 20%. I don't want to see those numbers when my system is at 10 to 20% utilization. Either the optimization of the automated fan up, fan down is just not good enough, or the CPU is not giving me the right numbers. Giving me the option to scale up or down those fans is fairly standard on most NAS brands, and I think it's weird that it's not present here. And I know when I have the device laid up against a couple of network switches in my little 6 Mini XL rack, and yes, I can see on screen that it's next to a radiator. That radiator has been powered off for years, by the way. I would say right now that it's weird that that system doing almost nothing prior to the Ratix build, that temperature is a little too high for my blood, and I don't like the idea that an idle system could sometimes be at a temperature in the 60s. As mentioned in the introduction, Unify clearly focusing on stability in the foundations of this system. Now, on the one hand, we could say, huh, that makes things slightly less exciting, doesn't it? But on the other hand, I'm hoping they do this and then later on roll out feature updates there. I want them to expand this series. I want to see different variations and hardware profiles of this device. And if that means they've got to spend the next three to six to 12 months nailing down the fundamentals and ensuring that this is the most stable base possible, that's great. But let's not overlook, there are still features available on domestic class NAS appliances right now that are missing here. That fan control that I talked about there, why on earth is that absent? The scheduled on off to allow me to create my own tailored um, uh, air gaps, I want that on this system. In most cases, I still like what I'm seeing here, and at 499, again, it's ludicrously well priced of what it is. But when I come back to this, whether it is a nine months later or a one year later, I want to start seeing, if not meaningful feature updates, at least a roadmap moving towards it, or at the very least, a one new version of this. But what do you guys think? You know what the comments before uh, below are for, so do let me know. Maybe you are an existing Unify UNAS Pro user, and you've got your own two cents to throw in. Let me know. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this, and for those that follow this series, I'll see you in the next three to six months.